Meet Arnold. Today marks the first day of his vacation. And don't even think that I felt sorry for this little piece of crap or that I care about your comments asking to give him a rest. Someone anonymous just sent him a free invitation to a holiday on a lake. Hmm. It's a really nice place and quite suspiciously familiar. Holy crap, Polly! It's Jason Voorhees! Jason is a seven-foot-tall madman with a tremendous craving for violence. Trying to run away or hide is useless. He has an inexplicable ability to suddenly appear behind his victim. Attack is the best form of defense. Set a trap for him. After being struck by lightning, Jason became super resistant to damage, but he still has no chance against a saw. Good lord, Arnold, you're like a monkey with a hand grenade. I can't trust you with anything. What a twist. Jason probably didn't want you to die in any possible way, except from him. Why are you acting so happy? Voorhees always resurrects, so you need to quickly come up with a plan B. If he can't be destroyed, then you have to limit his ability to move. You could pour concrete over his legs, and then he won't be able to follow you. Though there is one problem. Concrete needs several hours to harden. You just have to keep Jason in view and damage his limbs every time he starts to heal. You are now together forever. <laughs> Aim at the knees, Arnold. The damage will be more serious and recovery will take longer. I don't understand. What's happening? Arnold, I am your father. Meet Arnold. He's now a Transylvanian delicacy stuffed with rice. Sorry, Arnold. I'm not a big fan of such gory scenarios. So let's take a look at some interesting information. Let's wish Arnold's new friends a big bon appetit. Now, we should probably get to know them a little better. So, werewolves are called lycanthropes. That's the name they got from ancient Greece. The author of the term is Herodotus, a historian from 2,500 years ago, who, when describing Scythia, mentioned people who could instantly turn into wolves. As for vampires, the word vampire first appeared in the Oxford English Dictionary back in 1734. Arnold, you're alive! I'm so happy! But wait, what's that on your neck? No, you gotta be kidding me! You're actually the first person ever to get bitten by both a vampire and a werewolf at the same time. I'm already wondering just what the heck you're gonna look like. Well, you try to figure out how that's gonna work. I'll tell you an interesting fact. In 1999, 907 Americans took out insurance policies on themselves in case they suddenly turned into werewolves during a full moon. Arnold, looking like that, you'd be discovered a little too quickly. You need to choose a less obvious form. Ooh, Frankie has already added you to his friend list. That's sweet. He's also assembled from a bunch of random crap, just like you. Everyone knows about the ancient animosity that exists between vampires and werewolves, but I would have never guessed that I'd see such a thing in a single body. Oh, so you're getting hungry now. And you need food for two. Go, search for your victim. The perfect victim. Bon appetit, Arnie. Wait, Arnold, where are you? What did you expect? You can't go against the call of the wild. Just remember to clean up after your dog. Way to be a bloodsucker. With your moves, Arnold, you need to start thinking about going vegan. Ooh, I forgot to warn you. A double creature gets a double hunt. You need to put aside your differences, because you've got common enemies now. Prayer ain't gonna help you, buddy. And of course, garlic is deadly to you now, you moron. You're not the first victim of the hunt. In the 16th century, the French parliament passed a law to exterminate all shapeshifters. As a result, from 1520 to 1630, more than 30,000 people were killed in France who were thought to be werewolves. Lucky you, Arnold. The guys from Greenpeace are always on the lookout.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arnold, say hello to everyone. And goodbye as well. Because I will now stop your heart for one nanosecond. Calm down, chucklehead. This is all for the sake of science. The heart is a pump that makes blood move all around the body at a speed of about 25 miles or 40 kilometers per hour. The path which the blood travels through is more than 100,000 kilometers long. And if all these vessels were laid out in a single line, they would wrap around the globe twice. <laughs> Three, two, one, stop! <laughs> Arnold, did you pee your pants? If you add up all the pauses in an average person's life, it turns out that the heart is resting for more than 20 years. Therefore, no one will notice a little pause for just a single nanosecond. But I already figured out how to fix it. Look closely. The heart resembles a two-story house. There are two rooms at the top, called the right and left atria, and below, the ventricles. In its normal mode, the blood from the atrium is pushed into the ventricle with such pressure that the blood could hypothetically shoot out for more than 9 meters or almost 30 feet. Then the ventricle pushes blood into the lungs or the aorta, and life goes on as usual. But if the ventricle stops for at least 0.7 seconds, when all the other parts of the heart are still working, then boom, the amount of blood going through doubles, and it's torn to shreds. Not this time, Arnold. We need you, Arnold. Everybody loves you, right, people? I'm kidding. Nobody cares. Is it really happening? Arnold, are you getting married? The world was consumed by a new epidemic. The infected have spots on their skin. A terrible rash covers their entire face. They cough continuously and their front teeth fall out. And in order not to be isolated, people are inoculating en masse by buying the vaccine on the black market, deliberately putting themselves at risk as the vaccine has not yet been approved. But they do this so they can return to normal life as soon as possible. Arnold, what are you doing here? Oh, are you on a date? That's cool, but you sure could find a place more romantic than this cafe on the outskirts of the city. Here she is. Wow, what did you tell her to get her to come on a date with you? Uh-oh, how did so many zombies get in here? Arnold, it seems that Susie is in trouble. An average zombie, it has green skin and smells like my grandmother's feet. At first glance, it may seem that this is just your ordinary gamer who hasn't eaten for three days. But no, zombies have their own diet. Usually, these cute creatures eat human brains. Arnold, what are you gonna do? Wow, now that, that, that's what I call a gun. Who is that? Wow, no way. That's Chuck freaking Norris. And he's got an entire arsenal here. Now he's going to kick some butt. Yikes, this is kind of brutal even by my low standards. But very cool. Blimey, how many zombies are there? Looks like this big guy is the only one left. You call that a punch. This is a punch. Your date seems to have been canceled due to the unforeseen zombie attack. Arnold, don't forget about Susie. Crikey, are they immortal? Chuck, hit the gas. Huh, that went pretty okay. Oh no. Look, Arnie, you and Susie have something in common. Just like you, she loses her fingers. Hmm, it seems she's getting worse. Quick, do something. You guys gotta save her. So this is the guy can help us. Who the heck is he anyway? Grigory Rasputin, the most mysterious person of the 20th century. He's credited with hypnotic abilities and an extraordinary gift of healing. What a creepy place. Even worse than that cafe you invited Susie to, Arnold. What are we doing here? Where are we going? This is how I imagine the dentist office. 100% dreadful. 
Hey, can we maybe stop before it's too late? Here, everything is in the best traditions of Russian celebrations. Vodka, balalaika, bears, and dancing till morning. And here's the guy we need, Grigory Rasputin. This here's the big guy. It seems our healer has drunk an 80-proof potion. Looks like you're gonna have to figure things out on your own. You don't need to worry about him. Everyone is talking about the new vaccine. Many have already tried it out on themselves, but it turns out it has a side effect. People turn into zombies. This Rasputin guy turned out to be a real you necromancer. He took advantage of the situation and invented a vaccine that destroys the virus, but turns the living into zombies. Even Chuck is shocked. Chuck, your turn. Gosh darn it, how does he do it? He's even cooler than in Walker, Texas Ranger. So that's who Van Damme took lessons from. Ooh, here comes Daddy. This big guy is not going to be taken down so easily. Arnie, you're the only one left. Arnie, you are a warrior. Remember all the things I taught you. And most importantly, remember, there is no enemy but yourself. Arnold, are you? I knew it. Goodbye, Arnold. You were a nice guy. Ooh, now I see. What a twist. Arnold, I congratulate you. Now that you're finally getting married, though to a zombie. Although, you're a zombie yourself. But what's the difference? Seems like you played for a little too long today, Arnie. The only sensible solution is to go to bed. Good night, Arnold. Ooh. Spending the whole day playing video games won't go unnoticed. After such excitement, something terrible can happen. For example, sleep paralysis. REM sleep is a state in which the body is immobilized. With sleep paralysis, your brain wakes up, but your muscles stay frozen. So you can see and hear, but you can't move. During these moments, hallucinations start to occur, and it feels like a demon is sitting on you. But this isn't for long. What's wrong, Arnie? Are you afraid to sleep in the dark? About 10% of people on Earth suffer from nyctophobia, the fear of darkness. Scientists believe that this trait is genetically inherited. Our ancestors were afraid of being eaten by nocturnal predators, and so our imagination paints the most terrible pictures in the dark. Ooh, it looks like there's someone behind that window. Ha! Huh. In the world ranking of candy-ass scaredy pants, you, Arnold, get first place. All fear is formed in the amygdala of the brain. A feeling of fear is formed in this little tiny one and a half centimeter sac. There were actual cases when people's amygdala was destroyed due to a disease called Urbach White. This permanently disables the fear response. But this most definitely doesn't apply to you, Arnold. You're afraid of everything, even your own shadow. Okay, okay, I'll turn on the light, just so you know that nobody's here. The city is in chaos. Two giants, King Kong and Godzilla, are fighting. Good morning, Arnold. What are your plans for today? Hmm, maybe the plan for today is try not to die. Are you scared, Arnold? But what if this is all made up? What if I told you neither King Kong nor Godzilla could survive on Earth? It's pretty simple. Look, the largest man in the world ever was Robert Pershing Wadlow. His height was 2 meters 72 centimeters, and he lived for just 22 years. He suffered from a disease called gigantism. With this disease, the brain releases excessive amounts of growth hormone. There Therefore, in the process of human evolution, the norms for height and weight were established, and any large deviations are considered disease. One of the biggest stresses is to the heart, which has to circulate 15 liters of blood instead of just the normal five. And the heart often can't withstand such strenuous dynamics for too long. But what about the fact that there are other giant creatures on Earth, like whales? 
Well, everything can be easily explained. The density of water is higher than the density of air and is almost equal to a human's density. That's why we can float on the surface of salt water. This means that the habitat itself supports the weight of living things. For example, whales, whose ancestors 50 million years ago looked a lot like a dog with hooves. Godzilla and King Kong could not exist on Earth at all because of our friend gravity. But let's say we turn off gravity to scientifically allow for the existence of Godzilla and King Kong. Everything on Earth that isn't fixed to the ground would take off into space. That includes people who, if caught in the open, will be shot off into the great beyond. And those lucky few who find themselves in a room somewhere can still live for some time until the houses eventually fly upward. And in the end, our planet will completely crumble into pieces. Therefore, in order to destroy the Earth, you don't need to wait for a fight between two giants. You can simply turn off gravity. He's been wandering in the forest for three days now. All because he wanted to save money on a taxi. Oh no, Arnold! Arnold, don't tell me you're gonna drink from this lake! But don't worry, Arnold. If a leech gets into your digestive system, it doesn't have time to harm you. It'll quickly dissolve in your stomach. But you have more than one leech inside you, buddy. You're now the face of the social program, Affordable Housing for Leeches. There are more than 500 types of leeches in the world, but only three of them are considered valuable for humans. It would take just 10 minutes for 335 leeches to suck all the blood out of you. And you, Arnold, have one thousand of them every second counts to get rid of the leeches you have to drink salt water sorry arnie i didn't have another bottle drinking water from that lake was a bad idea arnold even a leech is smart compared to you its neurons were used for a biological computer called the leechulator it can add prime numbers, and you can't. But don't go rushing to celebrate, Arnold. It seems you've somehow attracted the attention of some really dangerous little dudes. I understand it's hard to believe, but you better not move, buddy. Arnold, let the bees bite you. Bee venom is cool. It contains many beneficial substances that can defeat even fatal diseases. But in your case, you're more likely to die from a heat stroke than from a thousand bee stings. Bees covering your body will heat it up to 47 degrees Celsius. Ooh, Arnold, you're good. Indeed, electromagnetic waves from a mobile phone can disable a bee. A bee is like a navigation system with a bunch of sensors pretty much like a tiny little airplane. Apparently then, when flying, just like with big planes, mobile phones must be turned off. In fact, if you put a mobile phone operating at a frequency of 900 megahertz in a beehive, then all the bees will evacuate within 10 minutes and never return. And the winner of the leeches versus bees battle is no one. It's a draw. Arnold is the winner as the most fearless but stupid person. Bye, Arnold. Hello, Arnold. Today you're going to fish on the banks of Sentinel Island. But don't you dare set foot on land. Arnold! Congratulations. You're now in the clutches of the wildest and most hostile tribe in the world. And they don't like guests very much. I'm afraid they're going to eat you. From your skin, they can make eight drums. From your veins, five bows. And from your empty skull, a big mug. And your scalp is going to decorate the chief's body. Arnold, where are you going? Wow, I didn't think aliens really existed. These guys are going to do something really useful with your body. Your body consists of 70% water, 24% organic matter, and 6% inorganic substances. In a cucumber, there's also a lot of water, about 85 to 90%. So technically, you're a very emotional cucumber. 
From the remaining 6% of inorganic elements, many useful things can be created. In your body, there's enough iron to make a nail 6 centimeters long. Your body also contains enough copper to make a pair of headphones. And all of this while you still remain alive. You can even remove most of your internal organs and still go on living. The human body seems fragile, but you can live even without your stomach, spleen, 75% of your liver, 80% of your intestines, one kidney, one lung, and almost every organ located in your pelvis and your inguinal cavity. Of course, you'll hardly be like a cucumber, but it won't kill you, and you will have those free headphones of somewhat dubious quality. But these are all useless things. In fact, the composition of your body includes carbon, hydrogen, sodium, and oxygen. All these chemical elements are also part of dynamite. The hidden explosive power of the human body is equal to 175 grams of TNT. In fact, the strength of the explosion will be in direct proportion to how much you like salty foods during your life. He's been working as a courier for two days. Arnold, how was it bad working for me? Every time it was a new adventure for you. New places, new emotions. It was fun. Yeah, your finger came off a couple of times, but we sewed it back on, didn't we? So, where are you taking the delivery? To the Mariana Trench? It must be fifth graders trolling you, Arnold. Come on, come back. You are a stubborn one. Okay, climb inside. <laughs> this huge transparent pipe reaches the bottom of the Mariana Trench. You'll have to go down 36,070 feet. It sounds like it's incredibly deep, but when looking at the whole planet, the Mariana Trench is not even a pothole in the road. In a sealed high-speed elevator, the trip to the bottom would take just 11 minutes. What an ignoramus you are! Now you have to get down manually. Due to the fact that the pipe is filled with air, the pressure at the very bottom will be only two times higher than normal. But if it gets filled with water, the pressure will increase 1,072 times. Just look at what cold, pressure, and lack of oxygen did to the local inhabitants. For example, xenophiophores had to develop immunity to uranium, mercury, lead, and other hazardous materials that would destroy any other creature on Earth. Looking at such unicellular organisms, an idea appears of how life on the Moon, Jupiter, or even Europa might look. Arnold, do you know what really awaits you at the bottom? Loneliness. There's not a single living soul, except for perhaps a lost shrimp. It's hard to believe it, but more people have visited the moon than the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Arnold, look, there really is someone out there. I wonder how he'll pay you with shells? The journey back will take at least 24 hours. Or you can just open the latch. The whole planet is infected with diarrhea virus from China. But I made your blood the only existing vaccine. There are 7 billion people in the world, and everyone is hunting for you. 195 countries have posted your photo on all possible media. You're in all of the police databases, and not only the world's police, but all the best special forces in the world are after you. Do you really think you can hide from all of them? You're on every single smartphone in social media. You become more popular than Greta Thunberg. I'm sure she envies you now. After all, you can actually help save humanity. Just give them your blood, all the way down to the last drop. Elite special forces from all countries are already coming for you. U.S. Navy SEALs, the French National Gendarmerie, Chinese Snow Leopards. But of course, even a random student could catch you. 
Big Brother is watching you. In New York City alone, there are about 20,000 surveillance cameras. They take photos, compare the distance between the main features on your face, nose, eyes, mouth. Data is converted into a person's numeric code, a face print, and verified with the database. In addition, on the darknet, anyone can buy image databases from video cameras of cafes, hospitals, shopping centers, even near the main FBI headquarters. Meaning, they can find out where you were just five minutes ago. Catch this. These glasses with built-in infrared LEDs will help oh. you to hide your face from the cameras. For them, hey. your face will look like a glowing hey. blind spot. Wait a bit. You forgot the battery. This isn't enough. You need a disguise. It was a bad idea to eat this many donuts. They provoked an excessive accumulation of gases. Unleash the winds! You look good, but search dogs will find you by the smell of butyric acid, the odorous component of your sweat. It won't help that just one gram of sweat is enough for the dog to smell you on the roof of that 10-story building or at a depth of 15 feet under concrete. In the United States alone, there are nearly 7 million drones. Stop waving and take this special weapon against drones. This gun fires a wide stream of electromagnetic emissions so you don't have to aim. It's enough for the interference stream to cover the drone and then it'll lose contact with its base and lose control. What have you done? Get lost in the crowd, bone brain! Well, you have to kiss. So, Arnie, any last wishes? <laughs> Meet Arnold. Hey. After tasting the foods of Asia and Europe, he returned home to try something even more exotic. Get your ass down here and choose what you'll eat first. Come on, Arnold. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. One bite from a baby cobra can kill a three-ton elephant. There's almost no air in its stomach. But when diving, snakes can hold their breath for up to 10 hours. Gastric juices will digest it in one and a half to two hours, as if it was a chicken. Everything that remains will have to go through the anus. Oh, look, it's venom. If it doesn't contact with your blood, it can't harm you. What the hell? Though as soon as it gets into an ulcer or a cut, the venom's effects are instant. Paralysis, convulsions, and after 15 minutes, you're a goner. But only if you don't use an antidote. Okay, who let the frog in? One gram of Philobate's Terribilis venom can kill a whole city worth of people. Should a small animal step on the trail of this frog, the toxin will kill him instantly. Even if you get a small drop of the poison on your skin, boom, you're dead. The frog will pass out 30 seconds after getting into the stomach, and 10 minutes of painful death will be waiting for you. And an antidote for this poison doesn't exist, so you can stop looking. And if a scorpion's poison is added to the philobate's poison, its strength will increase by 12 times. Any last wishes? Do you want the viewers to subscribe and leave a like? I see. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Incinerating ants, are you, Arnold? Does this make you feel like a god? You underestimate the enemy. Wow, what an irony. The hunter has become the prey. <gasps> Arnold, congratulations. You're now at the center of the most colossal war on a scale larger than all the wars of humanity combined. Ten quadrillion ants participate in it. Have you ever even seen such a number? And what numbers have you seen? Oh... Look over there, the ants are preparing for battle. If ants became human-sized, then humanity wouldn't stand a chance. After all, even an ordinary ant would be able to lift a 16-story building and run with it on its back at a speed of 55 kilometers an hour. And here come the guests. Um, run maybe, Arnold? Oh, Arnold, coordination in space has never been your forte. 
Although, look, you made them run in a circle and pointed the leader at his own pheromone trail. If this happens to ants, they fall into a death trap. You created an ant swirl. The leader will now hit his troops in a circle until they all die from exhaustion. You're a hero for these guys, Arnold. They want to introduce you to the ant queen. But what is this? Oh, you've got to fight for power. Sometimes a second queen may appear in the anthill. As a result of that, the two queens hold a duel between themselves, deciding who will get to rule the anthill. After the fight, the ants determine which queen they like the best. True democracy. And then the majority destroys the minority. I take my words about democracy back. Watch out! Arnold, you're truly lucky. You managed to survive even a coup d'etat. But what is this? You're saturated with the smell of corpses, and now the ants all see you as dead. Therefore, they're going to bury you alive. Arnold was a useless schmuck. May he rest in peace. The effect seems to have passed. Hi, Arnold. Well, now you know more about the world of ants, and therefore... What are you doing? 